traders, I'm done trading today. I'm going to finish my day up $12,000. And uh, the fact is I had uh, four trades today. One you're not seeing here. That was the, my second Netflix trade, which is a loss. One of the things, you know what, let me start uh, before that. Just uh, the basic idea why I took my trades and what happened today. And before I get to that Netflix trade, which is very important to explain too. So if you take a look at my pre-market picks, you will see five long, five potential long plays. Uh, two of them were Facebook and Snap. Why? Very simple. Both of them are gapping up. The market started with zero. So there was no gap in the market. Facebook and Snap, definitely stocks that everybody notices, which is great because you want to see a stock that everybody notices. People love to buy Facebook, love to buy uh, 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 Snap, uh, the both has uh, quite a lot of volume. If you take a look at uh, Snap today, uh, 83 million shares and of course Facebook. So you've got stocks that everybody notices and when they're gapping up, people love to buy them. So it's you expect it to be a gap and go and you look for a com for a potential uh, reversal, uh, breakout, whatever. Both of them worked out great. If you take a look at Snap, uh, opened with a gap up, tried to move higher, came down, which you expect it to do and then moved over the highs. Uh, that's where we went long before it moves over the highs. You always want to be before the stock is breaking out to a new high. I mean, the breakout is a good place to buy, but usually if you are an experienced trader, you want to expect the high. You want to buy before a stock is moving to a new high. That's the place where everybody's going to be and support your trade. But you want to do, uh, you want to get, come in before the crowd does. That's what we do here as traders. So that worked fine for Snap. That worked very nicely uh, for Facebook. Although initially, once I moved into Facebook, as you can see, it came down. But we survived this pullback. It was the right thing to do. Uh, it was strong. The market was moving higher. So if you take a look at the S&P, it was really just moving higher. These are five minute candles and there was no reason for Facebook to come down, although it did some kind of noise, whatever happened there. And then a big, big move up. Uh, the, the more interesting um, story I've got today is probably Netflix. That was a little bit different experience. I mean, the rest were just standard longs, right? You look at the stock that is gapping up, you look at the market moving higher and you just go long. The more interesting story is Netflix. Usually you see me going short a stock like that, usually during the first 10, I mean, sometimes uh, one, two, three, four, five minutes, sometimes a bit later. But look what happened here. The initial move in Netflix was down. It did not give me a chance to move in as a short. And anyway, I was not really interested in going short in Netflix. Well, if it had the perfect technical formation, the market would have came down too at the same time. I could have considered that and I, I would probably look for a short in Netflix if it had the right technical formation. But I was really looking for long. Uh, again, if you listen to Yogi here at uh, uh, the pre-market session where he uh, was talking about some stocks that uh, we were looking to trade today. He was looking for a Netflix long, which I was too. Why? Because it's a big company. It's not down too much, like four or five percent. And people love to buy companies like Netflix when they're down that much. We talked about it a few days ago. So if you take a look at Netflix, it came down strong, but you would expect a big pullback. And actually, I would have expected it to continue higher, which it did not. Well, no idea why. It did come down after all, but the long trade in Facebook was in Netflix, sorry, was amazing. So we really enjoyed that. Once it came down again, we thought it would be a good idea to add because I regarded this pullback here as no more than just noise, which I was wrong. So we went long over 500. That didn't work, not even for a short while. Well, and then it came down and I had my stop here under 496. But the thing is to remember, when you go long a stock or short, doesn't matter, you trade a stock and it's doing well and you think about adding to a trade after a pullback, which you could do. You, I, I, st I was still expecting, I was expecting Netflix to continue its uptrend. It did not work out. But when something like that happens, you always take a quantity 
that may risk your first trade, I would go up to half. Actually, I've got exactly half of my initial profit. I was up a little bit less, actually not exactly. I was a little bit uh, less than $8,000 up in Netflix, 7,900, I believe, something like that. I was up in Netflix and then I erased uh, a little bit less than half. I erased a little bit less than half. So my quantity, the one I added in Netflix, was so that I was uh, uh, I was taking a risk of approximately half of my initial profit. That's something you need to remember. You never add into a trade more a quantity that will risk more than half of your initial trade. The reason for that is uh, quite simple. It's a mental reason really. And the reason is, uh, again, uh, maybe you, you need to look back at your trades. And again, if you're not experienced enough in trading, you look back at your trades and, um, you know, if I ask you a question, um, how many times it happened to you that you uh, had a great trade and then you took a second trade in the st same stock that you traded successfully and the end result was a losing game. The end result was a losing trade. I mean, you made a nice profitable trade and then you added more size or you took another trade in the same in the same symbol and although you had a first great trade the second one took you under how many times did this happen to you if you don't mind uh, sharing just right yes now i had lots and lots and lots of this trade and the reason is mental why because once you have a trade that is going your way you regard your first initial move as uh, a successful trade of course as uh, you, you, you get a lot of uh, uh, self-confidence, of course. You think that you already kind of learned the way the stock is about to move. You, you, you have some kind of an intimate relationship with the stock. You trust it, which you shouldn't, of course. And then you kind of feel secure taking the second trade, which then takes you under. Since I know that I had a good feeling about my first trade in Netflix and I wasn't wrong, I knew that my second trade is very risky, mentally very risky, because I feel very well with Netflix. Why shouldn't I just add, I don't know, double my size or go in, all in, because I'm, I'm feeling very good and I have some kind of a profit cushion, of course, and then I would take a trade that would risk my first trade because I'm feeling very good about my first trade and I have a, like a good feeling, not only my first trade, I had another two very successful trades in Snap and in Facebook. So maybe I could, maybe I'm feeling too good about myself today in whole, not only Netflix. So you see, when you have a successful trade, you feel like, Mentally, you feel like you could have another successful trade. And that, in a way, uh, changes your risk perception. You would normally just add too much size to a trade where you shouldn't. Maybe the second trade is not as really good as good. It's not as, as good as you really think it is, because maybe you just mentally biased here. I don't feel like that when I take the second trade. You never feel like that. That's the risk. You feel like you're going to have a second great trade. And that's the problem. So if you will always allow yourself just to risk no more than 50% of your initial trade's profit, although you feel perfectly good about your second trade, please realize you're not there. You have some mental issues right now with this trade. You feel too good. Maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong, but you're biased. And that's where you should lower your size because you're biased. It's like I stop trading after three losing trades. Do I need to stop trading after three losing trades? No, I feel great. I want to have the fourth trade. I'm going to get a winner in the fourth trade. I'm going to cover all my loss that uh, happened in my last three trades. Wrong. Move out. You're mentally incapable of continuing to trade today. So it's all, you know, trading is really just a mental game, right? You know that. I don't have to teach you something new here. So a second trade in the stock that you're already making money, lower your size. It's just like losing money just from the other direction. Hope, hope I just helped you a little bit here. So anyway, three green symbols, although one of them was almost uh, double as much as I started with. But that's a good day. And... Um, 
That's it. I'll see you all tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. And as you could understand, I will not be here on Friday, traveling on Friday. So just enjoy the rest of your day. And um, thank you for being here. Um, thank you, traders in YouTube, for following us. If you don't mind giving us a thumb up, that will be appreciated. And um, again, to everyone, uh, especially you guys in YouTube, in YouTube, um, we do have a Facebook group which is named TradeNet's Talk Talks. You'll get a link now from uh, Clifton or Gabe, and um, you're very welcome to join us. We do discuss these kind of things uh, in our group, and we we'll very much like to see you there. Here's the link. Clifton just posted it. Thank you very much. See you all tomorrow. Bye, traders. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to join the TradeNet trading room for a free 14-day trial. TradeNet has educated more than 30,000 professional traders worldwide since 2004, and its trading room is one of the world's leading trading communities. Click here to start your free trial. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.